blessed um, by the scripture, by Reverend L.U. Henderson, uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church Arlington. We thank God for him. He's always available. Amen. Anytime that we call him and ask him to do something. And then uh, the word today will be uh, brought by uh, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson from the historical Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia, as I thought about who I would have this morning, I said, well, we're getting ready to celebrate Dr. King's birthday. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let me have uh, the one that goes all over the country. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, in Dr. King's celebration. And then we're going to have uh, the interim pastor of the um, uh, uh, Mount Salvation Baptist Church in Arlington, uh, Virginia, uh, Pastor Roy Thomas. Uh, he is very happy uh, today. Number one, uh, Georgia. One last night. Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, number two, he's celebrating his birthday. Amen. Oh, amen. So birthday, amen. We just praise God to have him on. So we'll we'll move um, in that order. Uh, so um, Pat, uh, Reverend Henderson, Amen. You can uh, get us started. Our scripture today is taken from Psalm fifty-six, verses one to three. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads as thus. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Mount High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will pray. In God, I have put my word of God for the people of God. Amen, Amen brothers and sisters. Pastor Johnson. Thank you, brother moderator. Um, I come to you today from the historical church with the biblical mandate, the Mount Calvary Baptist Church, and even within our history, uh, we can share with you that 100 years ago, during the Spanish flu of 1918, Mount Calvary was already 48 years old. And we are therefore living historical evidence that God is able to navigate his people through difficult valleys and obscure shadows. Please join me today in Psalms 30, verse 5. The New King James Bible reads, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Mm. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm going to speak to you briefly on the subject of motivated by the morning. Motivated by the morning. We stand here today as mere travelers in what is probably known as the North X or the lobby of a new year, the year of our Lord 20 and 22. We are at the staging area of another phase of eschatology. I see the gathering and often I can look through the news media and newspapers and see the gathering participants of time, history, and prophecy. Now, in spite of what we have been going through, I do not believe that this is the end, but we are living in the end times. God is preparing us during, yes, even this pandemic for one of the four equestrian citizens of Revelation chapter 6. 
Some of you know of the four horses of the apocalypse. These Crayola ponies of the Bible's final chapters are growing up before our eyes. And these stallions of eschatology, their growth challenges us to arm ourselves with the armor of God. Throughout history, these four horses have performed visitation throughout the corridors of time. I look through the nighttime of our existence today and I see the white horse, which represents counterfeit religion. I see the red horse that represents both death and war. I see the black horse that represents disease and starvation. And I also see the awful pale horse, which represents death and the fury of hell. In our lifetime, we have seen counterfeit religion. We have seen the Jim Joneses of life the Father Divines and the David Koreshes. In this we see that white horse. And then even on this Zoom network call today, we may have some yeah. veterans, veterans of war, the valor of combat, the rivers of blood and the pain of loss. The Bible reveals this as the red horse. We see as well the victims of hunger, the horrific shadows of famine, thrown against the nasty backdrop of disease and an awful inflationary economy. In this we find the black horse. But then we can hear galloping across the horizon the rancid valley of the shadow of death, the stench of the adversary's occupation who comes but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. We hear in the distance the pale horse. And these horses have been grazing throughout the countryside of world conflict. At times they have broken formation and individually devastated humanity prior to the distant horizon of the great distant tribulation. Grandmama would say, Jesus getting us ready for that great day, who will be able to stand? Nevertheless, I am still encouraged because I am motivated by the hope of the morning. Currently, these horses are not in full stride, but every now and then you can hear them galloping in the distance. And we wonder during these difficult days, over 800,000 individuals in the United States alone have left these mundane shores, many in which could have been rescued if they would have approached the vaccine rather than mocking that medical miracle. And they, as well as ourselves, should be motivated by the morning. Yes, weeping does endure for a night, but the morning brings joy. So in the interim, we must follow the advice of Jesus and work while it is day, because nighttime comes and no man can work. We must do as the Bible says, as to occupy 
until he comes. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, we cannot merely cover our heads with the blankets of religiosity until God opens the windows of the morning. We must actively be involved in the perfecting of the saints, the work of ministry, and the edifying of the body of Christ. We must pray as if all depends upon him but then we must work as if all depends upon us. We must maintain the mandates that God gave our congregations. We must worship, we must instruct, we must fellowship, but we must also evangelize. We must worship because the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. But secondly, we must instruct. We have a mandate to teach all whatsoever things that he has commanded us. And yet, like this afternoon, we must fellowship. We must not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And my father used to say many years ago, like the preachers of his generation, that fellowship means that there is more than one fella in the ship. We must evangelize. We must find creative ways to evangelize while socially distancing. We can send out video proclamations of the plan of salvation. We can text, we can email, we can make phone calls. Again, we must work while it is day for nighttime comes where no man can work. And I just want to know today, is there anyone on this Zoom Network Fellowship this afternoon who is motivated by the morning? Mm -hmm. Brother Pastor, are you being steadfast? Are you also being immovable? Are you abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain? These days, I'm not no longer motivated by the weekly attendance in the sanctuary. These days, I am no longer motivated by an active preaching calendar. These days, I am not motivated by anniversaries and annual days and those wonderful fellowships and fellowship hall. Today, my friends, I am motivated by the morning. Is there anyone online today who's also motivated by the fact that weeping only endures for a night? That yes, we must occupy until he comes. We must work while it is day. We must be ready when he comes. That, you know, that old song, I got all in my vessel. And the lamp is trimmed and burning. And I'm going to be ready when the bridegroom comes. Yes. We can hear the approaching hoofbeats of the apocalypse, but I don't know about you, but I also hear the echoes of hope. 
I hear the ultimate shouts of victory and the triumphant splendor of glory. Ladies and gentlemen, in this distance, I can also hear the trumpets. God is going to unseal this Ziploc bag of time and roll us out on the streets of eternity. I'm motivated this afternoon by the morning. And in this, I am reminded that uh, my dear departed father, he, he, he really couldn't sing, but he would rejoice in song. And sometimes he would break out with, in the morning, in the morning, when the dark clouds roll away. God bless you. Amen. Bless you too, God. Thank you. Keep us, keep God going. bless you, Pastor. Amen. Um, Pastor uh, Johnson. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. For Good that. morning. <clears throat> yeah. Pastor Thomas. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and Greets to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Yeah. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Most holy and everlasting God, our Father. It's once more and another time, a few of your handmade servants have pulled over on the side of the road <laughs> to fellowship one with the other. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this hour of fellowship. Thank you, O oh God, for this hour of encouragement. Thank you, O oh God, that even in the midst of COVID-19, we still have a God that we can call on. So God, we turn on in the world. You've still been good. You are still in control. You still hold the reins. And Lord, we want to thank you today for being God all by yourself. Every now and then, the way get a little rough. It, it, it go and get tough. And every now and then, we may feel like giving up. But God, when we look unto the hills from which cometh our help, our help is in the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. So God, we come now, motivated by the morning. Thank you, God. God it's dark now. In the schoolhouse, it's dark in the Senate house. It, it's dark in a lot of places right now. But God, we are not going to focus on what we see because we understand that we've been made endure for now. Lord God Almighty, we are rejoicing because joy cometh in the morning. So, right. God, we're not going to wait till you fix it now. We believe you're working behind the scenes. I heard Dr. London say that you, you may do a reverse or end around. We don't care how you fix it, but we know you're going to fix it. Have your way, God. And right now, we're not going to wait till you fix it. We're going to go ahead right now and give you a hallelujah praise in advance. Thank you, God, for working it out. We pray, oh God, that you will remember our president. Remember, oh God, our senators, all of our elected 
issue. We pray, oh God, we remember the, the people who are serving as police officers. We pray right now, oh God, that you will remember this entire world. Oh, oh God, so many people need you in so many different ways. And we pray, oh God, that you would just have your own way. My God and my Father, remember the Northern Virginia Association. I pray for every pastor on the line. God, we are dealing and, and moving in uncharted water. But God, I, I learned a few years ago that I don't have to know all of the directions. I don't have to have all of the answers. But I know a God that can see around the corner. Oh, I know a God that got all of the answers. And if I can just get to him, oh, everything will be all right. So God, we thank you. Bless these pastors. Bless their congregation. Let them continue to hold to your unchanging hands. And God, we know that all things work together for your good, for those who are called according to your purpose. Have your way now, Lord. We say thank you. We say glory, hallelujah. We honor you because God, there is none like you. You are holy God. You are righteous God. You are all together lovely. You are omniscient. You are just a mighty, mighty God. So we love you today. Have thine own way. We ask it in the only mighty, masculine name of Jesus. We say thank you, God. Thank you, oh God. We ask it in your name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. amen and amen ah, hallelujah i know you were i know you were and let me say thank god for those that have participated today reverend henderson <laughs> pastor johnson and pastor thomas we shoot for 20 minutes because we do realize that there are people that may be taking their lunch break so that they could join us and uh we just want to say thank you uh, and then uh, what we do for those that may not have been with us or for time after this, man, we do uh, for those that are able to stay, uh, give you an opportunity if you have any church announcements or anything that you want to make uh, that we can be praying about also that we may be able to attend uh, if our schedule would allow us. Uh, just let me say uh, that one TV show that I watch, and they don't, I don't know what you call it, they don't beep it out, but there's certain words uh, when the characters are saying them that you can't hear. And I was just sort of, uh, some of Jeffrey Johnson's uh, message was sort of blurred out, and we couldn't hear him. I was just wondering if he was speaking in a known tongue to all of us, and it just couldn't be broadcast across the line. But we do praise God for your word today. We praise God because he used you in a mighty way. He did. And, and uh, let me just share also that moderator McCray is on work assignment. That's why he's not with us today. And he will uh, take the lead next week. They're going to switch up him and moderator Pearson and uh, keep moderator Pearson in prayer. He's at a doctor, his annual physical today. So that's why he's not with us. So I don't know if anyone else had a um, any announcements that they wanted to share, amen, before uh, we, we go out? And anyone else with any announcements? Once again, for those that may have come in late, uh, Dr. Thomas' birthday is today. And he's also happy because Georgia won last night. He, he's, from, he's from Georgia. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, no. Happy birthday. Brother Thomas, this is your birthday? Yes, sir. Oh, what are you, a hundred years old? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to catch up with you and get some of that wisdom you got. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm going back. I'm 39. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moderator hit on yes, sir. Uh, January the 20th uh, at 7.30. A uh, note was sent out by President Wilson, and we're forming that committee. We'll have monthly meetings uh, trying to develop an agenda 
uh, to support uh, our local congregations and civic and social action work. Amen. We'll, we'll be looking for that. I have not seen that yet, but we'll be looking for that, that announcement. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any, any other announcements? Anyone having my Luther King services? Okay. Uh, Moderator, let me say this. Uh, thank you. You always send those uh, those public service uh, uh, flyers out. And uh, you send one out for folks that wanted to get tested uh, at, at the sanctuary last uh uh, last uh, Saturday, nine to two, and you know, so I in turn sent it out to uh, to my little network, and lo and behold, three people tuned in to the worship experience. One of them giving their life to Christ as a result of that flyer. Amen. So Praise God. I wanted to 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 encourage you to keep doing that as we. You know, I look at that as a, as a means of us doing ministry. That's our serve. We can't get to them every week. We got to do So I, I wanted to say that the test I, 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 one gave their life to Christ. Okay, praise God. Praise God. That's what. Pastor Johnson was speaking of in his uh, sermon. Amen. Amen. Well, look, we'll see you all next week. You all have a blessed week. <clears throat> all right. Morning worship.